Welcome to the third section, building the first endpoint with ASP.NET Core of the course RESTful Web Services with ASP.NET Core. In section 3, we will create our first endpoint with ASP.NET Core. First, we will explore Entity Framework Core a bit and create our first data storage with it. Then, we will create our first controller as our first endpoint and create routing on it. Then, we will see how we can call and receive data from this controller. We will be able to add data to the database, to manipulate data and delete data in the end. In this video, I want to talk about how to create a data storage with Entity Framework Core. In this video, we will look at how to install and use Entity Framework Core in our application. We will create a data representation object of the data we will send over the wire and we will create a repository with an interface for this data representation we can use with our database. Okay, so let's start. Before we start using SQL Server with Entity Framework Core, you have to install SQL Server first. You can go to this URL here on docsmicrosoft.com to get information how to install SQL Server. You can also do an install of the SQL Server Management Studio or SQL Server 2014 Express. So you can go to this link right here and just click the download button. If you click the download button, you can scroll down a bit and then you will see SQL Express with tools and then you can choose your appropriate exe and just download and install it i already did that so i can connect to my local sql server instance which is running here if you did that you can go to your visual studio and you see our packed web app which we've been working on so far the first thing we need to do when we want to work with sql server and entity framework core is to install entity framework core so we can do a right click and say manage NuGet packages here and then we will search for Microsoft Entity Framework Core and then you will see a package which is called Microsoft Entity Framework Core and we could install it. But what we need is we need Entity Framework Core and we have to access it over the SQL Server. So we will use Entity Framework Core and we need a provider for SQL Server. So what we can do here is search for the SQL Server and if we install this you can see here that on the dependencies every dependency which is needed is also installed. So the Entity Framework Core comes with this SQL Server NuGet package and this makes it a lot easier for us. So we will install that Accepted. Okay, and we're ready. Now you can check in the dependencies section on NuGet. You can see that Entity Framework Core SQL Server is installed. Okay, now we can start using it. Okay, so let's create a representation of our database. So what we can do in our project, we can do a right click and say add new folder and I will call this entities. In this entities folder we can create a new class going to ASP.NET Core class and we call it packed db context and this class will derive from db context. This db context is stored in the Entity Framework Core namespace. So we will include that and then we will do a constructor here and pass in the db context options of this pack db context, call it options and call the base constructor with these options. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need a configuration for our database to store a connection string which tells us how to connect to our database and how our database should be called. For this we can go into the app settings.json and we can just give a configuration which has a section connection strings and a connection string which is called default connection and it points to server, localhost, SQL Express database should be called pack database and we set the trusted connection to true. So if we save this 
Now we can consume in our configuration of our application this default connection string and therefore we can access our startup.cs file. First of all we can get rid of this configuration here and we can get rid of this one here and instead we can say services dot add services dot add db context which is the packed db context and we have to add the appropriate usings entities and in the constructor of the packed db context we will pass an options object options and we say options dot use sql server and to use this sql server we pass in from our configuration the get connection string and then we point to the connection string we just call default connection and we pass it in as a string here okay so what we're doing is we're calling add db context with our pack db context and pass in an options parameter and on this parameter we call use sql server configuration get connection string and then use the default connection and this get connection string is a method from asp.net core which is automatically accessing the connection string section in your app settings json file so now we are pointing to the correct database now let's build a model representation for something to send over the wire to create an object which we will send over the wire we can just use a normal class and i will go into our entity folder and to add a new class which is called customer so visual studio created a new class and we will give this class customer a few properties first of all it's got an id with the type guid then a string first name a string last name and an integer h so this is the object which we will store into our database and then we can go into our pack db context we can add this one as a property and we call it just db set and this should be our customer and we call him customer get set okay so right now the context is aware of that we want to store customers okay the next thing we need to do is to create a repository for that so that we can interact with our database using this packdb context to add a repository to our project we need a new folder called repositories so we we'll do a right click and add a new folder and call the folder repositories there you go do a right click and say add class and call it customer repository there you go and if we now take a look at the startup file scroll down a bit and here we can see that on the services collection we added the db context and we said that we can use this services collection to use the dependency injection pattern from Microsoft ASP.NET Core. So right now we added the DB context in the service collection so we can use it in our repository and inject it in the constructor of our customer repository. So if we do a constructor here, we can now say, okay, let's inject the packed DB context here and call it context adding the appropriate usings and store that in a private member packed db context underscore context and here we can say contexts equals contexts there you go so now we are just consuming the packed db context from the services collection and this is working because we added the packed db context in the startup file to the service collection and now we can implement the whole repository and I prepared something here so we see that we have all the methods we need to make the CRUD operations but we see red lines there what are they talking about they're telling us inaccessible due to its protection level 
Okay, why is that? Because on the PackDB context, we have to make our DB set public. If we save that, the red line should be gone, and there you go. Okay, so on this repository, we have a get all method, which is just returning an iQueryable of all customers. We're asking the context for the property customers. The get single method is taken in ID and is just searching on the context customer's property for a customer with the appropriate ID. The method add adds something to the context.customers property. The delete method takes an ID, is searching for the customer to remove and then calls context.customers.remove. Update is just calling update on the customers of the context and save called save changes so that when we modify the context, we can do this in multiple steps, but in the end we have to call save and this is firing all the changes to our database. Okay, so that's our repository for that. But we need an interface for that repository so that we can use dependency injection in an appropriate way. Microsoft Visual Studio covered this in that case, so we can do a right click on the repository and can say quick actions and refactorings. And then we get the possibility to choose extract interface. We can get a name, a new file name, we can choose all the methods which should be exposed. We say OK and right now we have an interface. Cool. Now let's check if our customer repository is implementing that interface. It does. Everything went automatically. So now we can go to our startup file. And right now we are doing add DB context only, but we want to add our repository as well. So we can say services dot add scoped because for every HTTP request, we want exactly one instance of this repository. Then we can say I customer repository and customer repository. Just adding the appropriate usings. Okay, there you go. The red lines are gone. And this is how you can add custom repositories to the service collection from ASP.NET Core to use it with the built in dependency injection. So, one last piece is missing because we want to create a database. We can do that with Visual Studio. The first thing we need to do is we need to modify our base path. Instead of directory get current directory, we will use the environment content root path. If you did that, he's now searching for the app settings.json connection string in the right place. If you did that, we need a migrations file. We can add that by going into the package manager console and type add migration and give it a name. Let's give it the name first migration. A migration file is a file which tells Entity Framework how to create the database. And you can see in the background our first migration class was created. And if you now type update-database and hit enter, your database will be automatically created. I already did that for the course. So when you hit view, server explorer now, you can see under the data connections when you're adding your localhost server, that your pack database was created in this case. If you open that up, you can see on the tables, here's our customer table. Do a right click on that and you can say show table data. And you see that the table is empty for now. To add something in there, this will be the content of the next video. So in this video, we saw how we can install and use Entity Framework Core. We used NuGet to install it and we could access it via the DB context the Entity Framework Core namespace gave to us. We created a data representation for our objects, which are customers in this case, and we added them on the DB context. And then around that, we could build a repository where we can work with these customers on the DB context. And we added the repository to the dependency injection system, which comes from ASP.NET Core. In the end, we saw how we can create the database with Visual Studio, and we saw how we can see the data which are stored into the customers table.